We're enjoying our footy marathon. I know our crew are. It was interesting. I just saw our floor manager, Kevin Williams, move, and that'll give you some indication of just how exciting he's finding the evening. But we hope that you are too. It's amazing, isn't it, you know, how some clubs have to wait almost an eternity before success comes their way. Remember, of course, Collingwood in 1990 broke a 32-year drought when they won the flag, defeating Essendon. Other sides too have had long, long waits. What about Footscray? And interestingly, Melbourne also. Well, these two sides met way back in 1954 when the Doggies broke the drought. William Sunny Day in front of 80,000 people. Footscray win their first premiership ever. And the umpire that day, Lou, was uh, Jack McMurray Jr. And that, incidentally, was his fourth grand final. And what a day it was for everybody. It's had a nice sunny day. I'll tell you what, those players were primed for the occasion. Ted, as a player yourself for four years, you must have been terribly thrilled, not only for yourself, but for the rest of the team. Uh, it was a magnificent thrill, the greatest story in my football career. You notice Charlie Sutton there, Lou, he uh, went through with Donnie Ross to open up the start for in the first quarter. There's Peter Box there, just been put down. Hit him, Charlie. Well, Charlie uh, went after Lance Arnold that time. You see him number 10. And there we see Jack Collins. He must have been a great full forward on that uh, grand final. He was final. a magnificent footballer right through his career. He equaled the uh, grand final record that year, kicking seven goals. And uh, a great player, very on his day, unbeatable. You mm. notice right, Donnie, Ronnie McCarthy there, there's Ross again, and Dave Bryden, a great ruckman, with Collins taking another sensational mark over Lance Arnold. Well, uh, Collins, of course, on that day created uh, or equaled uh, a league record by kicking seven goals in the grand final. So that was another final, but you can see the crowd there, and uh, of course, the crowds over the years haven't changed, and the Bulldogs certainly must have captured the imagination of the Footscray supporters, Tim, with that great win. I think Footscray closed down. You notice going through very hard there is Kenny Melville, 38 for Melbourne. Now Stewie Spencer with Melbourne has the ball. Notice all the drop kicking and stab passing mm. in this game, Lou. There goes Roger Duffy, a magnificent half forward flank, a high flyer, uh, kicked a lot of goals for Footscray. That was a year that uh, those players will never, ever forget. Their only premiership win. Peter Box, Brownlow Middleton, in 56. There, there goes Sutton again. Get in there and give it to him again. Onto his left boot, Charlie, and Collins, of course, putting Arnold into the crowd. Well, they certainly played it with, the, uh, with a tough feeling. Uh, Footscray, there's no doubt about that. It's Donnie Ross again. He played a magnificent... I think he played in the centre that match, Ted. He did, Ted. and uh, Peter Box played a centre-half four. And there we see number four, Christie, but there's a player that uh, we gave you at Collingwood. That's Harvey Stevenson, uh, Stevens, I should yeah. say, in the ruck. And what a great year he had that season. Roger Duffy kicking another goal there, but Harvey Stevens Lou finished fourth in the Brownlow Medal in 54 to the uh, eventual winner, Roy Wright. There's a quarter time scores. Footscray 6 3, 39 to Melbourne 1 4 10. Well, that's and how it went all day, Ted, because they were never headed uh, Footscray and they were far f too fast all day for the Demons. And of course, I don't know whether you know this, but you'd know it, Ted. Possibly a lot of our viewers may not know this, but after being defeated by Footscray, uh, the Demons went on to win five of the next six grand finals. Yes, they did. And uh, unfortunately, Footscray lost a lot of players after 54. They were cleared away uh, to other clubs and to interstate and country. But uh, it certainly was a, a great win. And there's a good mark taken there again. I think that's by Ted Whitten himself. And Ted, you look a little bit different uh, to what you are today with a short back and side. I think we all look a little bit different today. But I played on a guy called Jeff McGiven, a very hard and tough footballer, but always had a lot of good battles with him. Peter Box from centre half forward again putting the ball up into attack. But by G. Lou, they had some good players, Footscray. There's Herb Henderson there, number 25. Now, this is a guy that kept John Coleman, the great John Coleman, down to uh, four goals each time he played on him. And Johnny Kerr was a great... There goes Dougie Reynolds now. Look at this fellow go. I think they speeded up the camera for Dougie there. And we see Charlie Sutton, my old opponent there, kick a goal. And, of course... Well, you know how tough he was. Well, Charlie was an inspiring leader. We see the centre bounce. There's a very famous number one for Melbourne there, Dennis Cordner, who turned out to be one of the best ruckmen the, the league's ever seen, Ted. He was a great player, an unorthodox kick of the ball, but uh, he certainly knew how to handle that big knock away from the centre. Ron McCarthy again onto his left boot, being chased by Barassi. Down there is Christie in the goal square for Melbourne. And a Footscray get another point on the board. There goes Reynolds there, and Case of Melbourne chasing with Ralph Lane, who was now a, uh, a, a member of the Victorian Football League executive and doing a great job. Alan Martin, a half-back flanker, number 19, going in there for the ball for Footscray, with Wally Donnell helping out. And, of course, uh, Alberston, number six of Melbourne. Half-time scores, you can see there. Is that the half-time scores? That is, Ted, the half-time scores. And, incidentally, Melbourne did have an excuse, Ted, because 
They claim they had five of their star players out in Peter Marquis, uh, uh, Mackenzie, Trevor Johnson, Laidlaw and Ridley. Don't make excuses. That was our year. That was a Bulldogs year in 54. Sutton had us primed and we were ready to take on anybody that year and that's how it finished. We doubled the score and you notice this kick of Ron Stockman's here right now. now He's only 25 metres out. Now, and Ron Stockman's the sort of bloke when he used to go back for his kicker, used to yell out to his uh, teammates, spread out. <laughs> yeah, Stockman style, it's magnificent. Now look at that for Well, he kick. did go for a short pass, I know, on that occasion, but Harvey Stevens was a bit of slow out of the box. There goes Stewie Spencer. And what a great play he turned out to be. Come over from Tasmania and a magnificent footballer. Harvey Stevens showing pace here. Ted, uh, did Peter Box not... He didn't win his Brownlow medal that year, did he? No, he won the Brownlow medal in 56. Incidentally, there goes Jeff Collins, number eight for Melbourne. He was the captain of the Demons in that year. He won it in 56, uh, Lou, and Don Ross... One Footscray's best and fairest year, he won the middle. And the best player on the ground in this grand final is my old sparring partner again, uh, was Charlie tough. Sutton. The ahead. late Brian Gilmore, too. Yes. Uh, Lou played a great game that year. Back in the centre again, you see Corden going for the knockout, and once again he won that one, but Harvey Stevens certainly gave him plenty to work on all day because he was a very good player. My golly, Charlie Sutton, as old as, uh, as he was in those days, yep. is playing pretty well, Ted. He did well. He uh, he sat in the forward pocket alongside uh, Jack Collins, had an, having an occasional run on the ball, and uh, he certainly made his presence felt. There's another great mark by Jack Collins right on the goal line. Now, you watch when Jack kicks this ball. It's a great shot for young uh, footballers today. The legs straight, the taut instep, as we have all heard about. Now, just watch this, the taut instep of the leg. <laughs> Didn't have time to see it. That's left. right, but uh, incidentally, if you look at Jack Collins in that picture before, Beautiful he's certainly him. changed in stature, hasn't he? Haven't we all? There goes a knock from the centre once more. Peter Box involved and going through hard Ron Stockman once more. Uh, it says Charlie once more going through hard McGiven and Charlie looking for a free kick and getting it from Jack McMurray well Charlie had this very uh, well had the happy knack of uh, umpiring again. he used to bluff the umpires and I think uh, Jack McMurray as P Ted said before umpiring his fourth grand final three quarter time scores he could bluff anyone Charlie he was very good at doing that incidentally Ted it was the eighth time Footscray had made the finals and they were the first of the new association clubs to win a flag. Yeah, it was a magnificent thrill for all concerned. In 51, when I started, Charlie had just taken over as coach and we made the finals uh, against Essendon, uh, but that was the finish of it. We went out in the first semi, but 54, he'd built up, he had some good young players there, and in 54, they all uh, come to fruition and uh, they won the flag for him. And by gee, he was a pretty proud man that day, Charlie. There's young McLean, the late Ian McLean, who played for Melbourne on the wing, being chased by Ronnie McCarthy. And of course, going in hard once more down there is Alberston of Melbourne, doing a uh, bit of a weave from Wally Donald, the back pocket and vice captain there. Rolf Lane's in there once more, and uh, it was a hard-fought game, just the same, Lou. There goes Doug Reynolds once more. This is a nice piece of football. You'll see him take a handball back here, and eventually the ball bounces back into his arms, and he puts it through on his left boot. We could do anything in the last ball. Well, you could, because when, you know, when everything's going your way, let's say luck, and you've got your confidence up, it's very hard to throw. But it was certainly a great uh, win for Footscray, and you must have celebrated pretty well that night, Charlie. Well, uh, uh, no, uh, call uh, me Ted. Ted. <laughs> Ted. <laughs> we had a big reception out of the Footscray Town Hall. Johnny Kerr, a great player that uh, in that grand Best final. Best player on the oh, ground that day. No doubt about that. And there goes Brian Gilmore once more. Yes, we had a big... Uh, uh, mirror reception at the uh, town hall and back to the rooms. Hector Lacey, the late Hector Lacey, told all the Footscray supporters to bring their own glass. There must have been 25,000 or there was no grog. Well, I can recall in those days the crowd running onto the ground and mainly Footscray supporters. I, I think that Footscray in that particular year had 11,000 members. But a great win to Footscray, 1954. The first uh, premiership for that club and, as I mentioned before, the first of the new association clubs to win a VFL flag. A great effort. And uh, congratulations. We wish we could turn the clock back. And we're... Two of football's most famous names bringing us that action from 1954, Louis Richards and, of course, the late E.J. Witten. And uh, what a year that was for Teddy, 1954. We're going to take a break in our footy marathon and we'll be back with more shorts.